Howdy folks! I've been analyzing a mineral or rock on and off now for at least over six months and uh, I've done a, a number of rocks and minerals in the past and, and every time I've done it I've been able to have a good idea of what the, the material was uh, but this case I'm, I'm still a little bit stumped. Uh, usually I have some pretty easy things to look at and I thought this was easy too uh, mainly because it was uh, because of the color. It was kind of a greenish chalky rock with some uh, brown spots to it. I'll insert some pictures. I collected this rock on a ridge in the Iron Mountains, actually on the Iron Mountain Trail. The Iron Mountains are in southwest Virginia and they are just north of the Blue Ridge Mountains and run parallel. Uh, there are both brown and green spots on the outside and throughout the inside of the rock. It looks like one is transforming to the other through weathering or some other process. I broke up the rock and sorted out predominantly green pieces for the analysis. I decided not to go over all that video but rather to just cover the results and uh, so you can kind of see what I came up with and uh, maybe somebody out there has an idea of what this uh, this thing might be. Here's the summary of the results that I got. Uh, it's broken down into three types of testing and I actually performed them this way. Uh, the first thing I did was what I call the physical testing. Uh, kind of the stuff you do first thing when you look at a rock. I measured the specific gravity of two and a half so the, the rock was pretty light. Uh, the hardness between one and a half and three, it was kind of hard to tell because it was a little bit crumbly. So it's somewhere in that range, so it's pretty soft. The streak was pretty much the same color as the rock. It was kind of a whitish or a light green, uh, pretty much the same color that the rock was. I did a acid fizz test, which is actually a chemical test, but uh, it's often done with the physical testing and that came up negative so that so it's not a carbonate. Uh, I did the a fusibility and it came up negative uh, even with a uh, torch but uh, I did see a black globule formed uh, at times uh, when doing so but I didn't see any melting at all. So that was that. Uh, the next thing I, I tried and I, I wanted to, to give this a shot I've done the qualitative testing before on, on some previous samples, but I wanted to actually do some of the classical tests. At least that's what I call them. They're, they're the older tests. They, they sort of have an alchemy feel to them. Uh, and uh, they're, they're not quite as, as organized, but um, the first thing I did was the, the borax and a microcosm salt bead, uh, a bead for each of those. And the results were pretty much the same. I got a yellow bead that was uh, yellow when it was hot, and a bead that was clear when it's cold. And that seems to fit with uh, iron, molybdenum, tungsten, or titanium. Uh, I also did a flame test and, and came up with a, an orange color which might indicate calcium. I did a, a reduction, basically taking some of the ground uh, mineral, mixing it with a flux and, uh, and some charcoal, putting it on a charcoal uh, slab with a re reducing flame and trying to take any oxides or whatever the, the, the metals and, and reducing it back to a metal form to get a metal bead and in doing so you might be able to get some information but I, I did not form a metal bead so I really got no information from that and then I went and, and did the fluxes uh, there's a whole list of fluxes that were listed in the one book that I reference every every video it seems it's the Qualitative Analysis of Rocks and of Minerals by Orsino Smith and uh, he has all sorts of uh, fluxes, a soda flux, an iodide flux, a bromide flux, and a chromate flux and basically you take uh, some of your powdered mineral or, or sample and you mix three parts of flux to it and then you heat it with a either an oxidizing flame or a reducing flame on either a charcoal slab or a plaster slab and after you do that you see what kind of sublimates form away from the 
the original sample and you see what kind of residue you have left and based on the, the colors and, and what you, you find you can make some uh, uh, deductions on what your sample is. But unfortunately you see there's a whole bunch of different combinations you can do here and I, I, did, uh, I did them all except I only used the oxidizing flame. But I, I did not find any significant sublimates to give me any clues. I did see a whitish sublimate with the bromide flux on the charcoal, uh, kind of a whitish ring, but that was indic indicative of many things, so it really didn't narrow anything down for me. And uh, But what I did find is that most of the uh, fluxes resulted with a black residue with at least part of it that was magnetic. So that was an interesting bit of info. Uh, then the last thing I did was uh, I heated it in a some of the mineral sample in an open and a closed tube and the results came out the same. I, I ended up with the, the mineral actually changed color from the greenish to the brown and it's kind of the same brown that's in parts of the, the original rock sample that I have. And they both came up with uh, some condensation further up the tube so there must be some water of hydration uh, in the rock sample. Based on the classical test, I really didn't get a lot of information other than I didn't see any strong colors with the, with the beads. And I did see some water condensation in the closed tube and the, the black residue is, you know, important. And I'm, the brown residue was, was interesting too, but I'm not sure what to make of that. So anyways, I did all the classical tests and got a little bit of information, but not, not as much as I would have hoped. So I went back to the qualitative testing where you, you know, dissolve it in, in acid or, or uh, in this case, I found that it was partially soluble in hydrochloric. Uh, about half of the sample was soluble in hydrochloric. It was uh, not soluble uh, significantly in nitric or sulfuric. So I actually did a fusion too and dissolved that in acid and I got about 80% of it to dissolve. So I actually went through the qualitative testing with both the what was uh, dissolved just in acid and also uh, the what was uh, uh, went through the fusion and, and dissolved in acid. Uh, the difference being is the stuff that we have dissolved in hydrochloric we can't really test for uh, the silver group because the silver group doesn't dissolve it in, in the chlorides. Uh, the, the, the chlorides uh, precipitate out. So we miss that with, with this material. And conversely, the stuff that we did the, the fusion on with the soda fusion, we can't test for, for uh, sodium because obviously there's, there's sodium in the, in the fusion. But, uh, but I did take them both through the analytical procedure and they came up with the same results. What I did find is uh, there, were, there were silicates as indicated by what didn't dissolve in the acid and also some uh, effervescing in uh, one of the beads here which is indicative of silicates. Uh, we came up with iron. I could definitely see iron testing and that's also, uh, you know, you would guess because of the magnetic bead. I came up with a positive, positive test for aluminum and I also have an analytical test now that uh, shows calcium and magnesium. So I know there's either either and or uh, calcium and magnesium. The flame test was orange, so we know there's calcium. And there may also be magnesium in there too, but I'm, I don't know that for sure. Because my analytical uh, test confirmation isn't good enough to separate those without... Uh, uh, there's ways of doing it, precipitating precipitating out oxalates, but I, I didn't have enough sample to, to do that with, nor is my technique good enough to do that yet. So possibly some magnesium, and I had some conflicting results with the chrome. Uh, I got a precipitate out that would indicate chrome uh, coming out of the group, which would be a dark grayish greenish uh, precipitate, which I got, but when I did a confirmation test which would have been the hydroxide, it, it came up negative. So maybe during the test I didn't, uh, you're supposed to oxidize it down to a, 
a plus six uh, hexavalent chrome, and maybe I wasn't successful in doing that. So I'm not exactly sure what they're chrome, but we do know some silicates, iron, aluminum, and calcium. Uh, the most interesting thing is there was not copper. When I look at that sample, the first thing I think of with that green color is copper, but there's definitely not copper. We didn't see it in any of the beads, any of the flames. We didn't get any uh, copper sulfides precipitating out uh, during the, the qualitative testing, so, so no copper in there. So what we're looking at, uh, from what I'm guessing, is we're looking at a, a, a silicate, the hydrated silicate, because there is water silica uh, that also has uh, aluminum, iron, and calcium in it. Maybe magnesium too. So I have to kind of do some hunting and see if that fits any possible mineral categories. After doing the physical and classical tests, I actually went through some of my references that had different charts and uh, lists of minerals uh, by all sorts of different properties, but I looked up the, the ones that we're in the range that, that we had with the, the hardness and specific gravity and uh, color and things like that. I came up with a list of uh, a dozen minerals or so that uh, could be possibilities. And I, I kind of dug deeper and none of them really fit the, the description too well. Uh, I made the mistake of revisiting this exercise. Uh, I don't have the, I misplaced the list, but uh, kind of gave myself a headache going through all of the, the different uh, possible minerals because there's just so many of them. And with limited information, it's kind of hard to, to nail anything down. Uh, from my first list, the, the one that sounded and actually looked possibly like the mineral, uh, the others just had different, a, a different appearance on, on pictures that I saw online. Uh, the one was this glauconite, which is a hydrated silicate of uh, potassium and iron. Uh, we didn't find any potassium. Uh, another reference uh, lists some other you know, more complicated formula, which could have calcium instead of potassium. Uh, but most of the references seem to indicate potassium. And one other caveat was that uh, it seems to be found exclusively in marine environments, and this was found at the top of a mountain. So I know the bottom of an ocean sometimes becomes the top of the mountain when geological forces push things around. But uh, So this, this may not be it. The other closest possibility I found was this Vulcan scoite. It's spelled two ways, V-O-L-K and V-O-L-C-H. And it has all the, the metals that, that we found. Uh, the, the main ones, uh, which were the uh, calcium, iron, and aluminum. And it also could possibly be the two that we weren't sure about, magnesium and chrome. Uh, and it's a silicate with, uh, with water associated with it. So that, that seems to fit. Uh, this is in the clay family of, uh, or clay-like family of minerals, so that this glauconite is actually in the mica family of minerals. Uh, both are phyllosilicates, but I don't know if we can actually nail it down to, to anything at all more specific. Uh, that would be nice, but without knowing the, actually the type of silicates and the, the, the atomic structure and layout of, of all the materials, uh, who knows? So... I'm going to close out this video and just call this stuff a hydrated silicate of iron, aluminum, and calcium and go from there. I think that's about all we can say unless somebody, maybe somebody out there has a, a better idea of what this is. Definitely it looks like it, it's, it's been weathered or maybe transformed from that brownish mineral. But uh, we'll just call that the... Uh, uh, hydrated silicate of those metals and, and go from there. So thanks for watching. I, I did learn a lot about the uh, some of the analytical techniques that I haven't included in this video, but maybe I'll post those later. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll, we'll try this again on a, a different uh, different rock.